All right, thank you for joining us for this last um, presentation of the day. Um, Kayla and Will are here from Hogsworth Consulting, and that's work on a large scale bank stabilization with Ponder A Conservation District. And we're going to share with us uh, some stories about the project. Yeah. All right, so my name is Kayla Pasa. I'm a civil engineering project manager at Ellsworth Consulting. I was a project manager for this project and had the pleasure of working with KFC and this is my co worker, Will. Well, I'm a project manager. 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 I'm a she did not spoke on TV, uh, still stay in touch. She's been a great person to work with. And then Mary Malone took her place, and Lori Brenner, who's a very specialist, that's also helped out with this project. Is that giving you trouble? I'll accept it. Okay, so a little outline of the presentation. We're going to do a little background and drivers for the project, go over the goals and methods used, and then show how we prioritize and selected the 10 locations to the project. Do a quick overview of the individual projects and the shareholders that were involved, the permitting process, and then we're going to do kind of a deep dive in depth project spotlight on one that's going to be shot this year, and then just go over a few takeaways, and then I'm going to go over some questions. So a little project background, um, KCD wanted to start looking at providing better water quality and riparian habitat for salmon species on the Pondre River, which is in Raya 62. Pondre River stems out of Lake Pondre, which is in North Idaho, and then the river runs right up the Idaho-Washington border in that upper northeast corner. This is a lot of the orange. And in case you guys aren't from the area, Rise 62 is in the upper northeast corner of Washington. And one of our is right here. I'm just going to give you guys a little video of this is the Pondre River. It's super wide. It's very slow moving. It's basically a very slow moving lake. So it's very different than most rivers. It's very lazy. Uh, you'll see there's a little bit of shore. There's a lot of bumps along the river, and there's very steep banks and just a lot of trees that are on the top. So the project drivers. Steep eroding banks. The banks range from 20 to 60 feet high. Some of them are straight vertical drop with a lot of different erosion techniques happening. Um, there's a lack of fish habitat. There's just a lot of gravel or river up that homeowners have currently or used in the past along the banks. And the endangered species in this reach that PSCD has been worried about are the bull trout, mountain whitefish, and the west of cutthroat trout. So this river runs a little too hot for these species to thrive. And so the goal and the effort behind this project was to try to start creating habitat that these species can hang out in once they add in the fish ladder at Albany Falls upstream. I'll let Mel talk about the project goals a little bit. Um, so DOCD has um, program goals that we're going to here that we apply to our project. So, those goals include improved water quality, enhanced fish habitat, as well as being safe. Um, so, for improved water quality, um, the program goal um, is to prioritize reaches um, for the concentrated conservation activities in the river as a whole, which applies to all three of these um, goals, as well as develop partnerships with agencies, consultants, us, and other um, consultants, as well as to establish a market water quality monitoring. As well as enhancing fish habitat. So, um, investigating the existence of threatened and endangered species in the river currently, um, protecting our pairing areas along the banks, um, establishing native landings, for the use of water for being general. So, and thirdly, is bank stabilization, as Kayla said. Um, a lot of banks are sort of steep and really tall. Um, so, just investigate and prioritize the high erosion areas that we saw along the river. 
property so that the property isn't falling into the river as well as just preserving um, the beach that they have that they want to keep, um, create a fish habitat as well as vegetation. Um, so there's three uh, kind of main failures that are seen. First one is total erosion, which occurs at the um, the bottom of the slope of the bank, and this can occur from wave runoff from boats, and jet skis, as well as just the movement of the water along the river as the roads the bottom. Um, and then mass failure, which is you can see in this photo, is basically a big swamp, um, which the upper half or a large portion of the bank just falls uh, and it goes that way. As well as being seepage, which is kind of a globalized mass failure. So, there'll be little pockets in the uh, in the bank where water can reach and soak in, and that can help. Um, so, traditionally, so there's two run of the bank stabilization, bank stabilization techniques. So, traditionally, uh, a lot of these are rock and cement. So, riprap, avians, and bulkheads, um, they're all effective techniques and they're all quite permanent looking and um, do not fit in with the natural environment. So let's try as we're moving in recent years, we're moving towards five engineer techniques, such as coconut log, large wood material, and live stays and things, which all do the same things as the traditional um, techniques, help stay like the thing, but are much more environmentally friendly, as well as just fit into the natural environment, uh, they're not such, don't stay out as much. So the bioengineer techniques that I've mentioned, um, these benefits include stabilizing the shorelines, um, reducing erosion, increasing shade potential, improving water quality, um, heats in the fish habitat, as well as improving the migration potential of the river for the fish that you that for spawning. And we just have a little video to recap. So. You want me to try to push play on this? Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're on the Ponderay River and we're with Kayla taking a look at some potential projects. Right now we're at Bear Paw, which is a large stretch of properties that has significant erosion. And today we're going to talk about what salmon recovery looks like in the Ponderay River. Um, so as many of you may know, we received some grant funding from the Washington State Conservation Commission to implement a planning and design project for salmon recovery projects. Now, what does that look like? Many people have asked, well, we don't really have anadromous salmon, and that's salmon that go out into the ocean and then return to freshwater areas. So why would we need that funding? Actually, we have native salmonids, specifically bull trout, wet slope cutthroat trout, and mountain whitefish. So we're working with Kayla and the expertise that she's gained throughout her um, college and uh, previous careers to implement restoration projects to provide habitat for salmon as they move through the system. Now, at this point, very few salmon are actually able to make it into the Pondre River because of the dams at Albany Falls, at Box Canyon, and at Boundary. So, um, in the next 10 years, the folks at Albany Falls are uh, going to install a fish ladder. At Box Canyon Dam, they already have a fish ladder that these bull trout will be able to move through the system and return to their headwaters that they haven't returned to in over 100 years. So, Kayla, what does salmon recovery look like in the Pondre River watershed? As you can see behind me, we have some steep eroded banks. They're bare. We've got some exposed roots. And it's just not really very fish friendly and it's also not safe for the landowners out here. So some ways of using bioengineered techniques is to utilize large woody material like a root wad and you can do different diameters, different lengths, different angles and kind of clump them together along the bank. And this way it'll help promote some stabilization for the bank. It'll 
push the water away and it'll provide some habitat for the fish. It'll help give them some shade and some cooler water pockets so they can kind of chill there while they're moving upstream. <laughs> Um, and then some other techniques we can use is some coconut coir matting, either in rifts up the bank or just kind of straight in along the bank. And then you can stake in native material throughout it, and it'll eventually flourish and create its own type of stabilization for the banks. So it'll be nice for the homeowners to look at. It'll also be nice for the fish, and it'll be as part of our salmon recovery funding this grant round, we're going to previously survey sites along the Pondre River and the Little Spokane River uh, to consider other options aside from just riprap and using heavy rock. So as I've discussed in previous videos, and if you've conducted a site visit with me, fish really like vegetation. So we're working to install more plants like mountain alder, willows, red osier dogwood and other plants, in addition to softening the slope of the bank so that we don't see as much erosion. Uh, an idea that we're considering with our engineers would be to install rock and then put a plantable soil or medium on top of it so that we can plant into that. So for some landowners, they don't wanna see the rock and neither do we. Another component that we're hoping to install would be large woody debris. So this is, looks like root wads, which when the water rises, will uh, create eddies and pools for the fish to uh, move out of the main stem of the channel and rest before they continue moving forward. And they also prevent uh, further erosion from the water during those high flow times. One thing that we'll also do on this particular site would be to remove a bulkhead. So we'll get some video footage of that. And as you can see, that truly hardened structure impacts the soil and sediment around it, forcing water off of that bulkhead and creating an increased risk of erosion around it. Thanks again for joining us today, you guys, as we continue to figure out what salmon recovery looks like in the Pondere River. If you're interested in learning more, please reference our website, www.pocd.org. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and find us on our YouTube channel. Are you able to advance you know, on your end? No. Uh, YouTube world now. <clears throat> so that was kind of a little background of everything that has to do with this project that we're doing. Um, so I wanted to do a little project overview of start to finish just on what Alex had talked about. So PSCB did a really great job doing their outreach with the local homeowners, landowners, the community. They sent out a bunch of flyers to everyone's homes, emails, they made personal phone calls, and they had over 100 responses to them wanting to see who was interested in putting in these riparian habitat, fish-friendly bank civilization techniques. And so they wanted our help to prioritize these to help come up with 10 shovel-ready projects. And so on the left, we have a map showing all of the responses we have. We've categorized them from erodibility, so got high, moderate, slow, and no erosion. And we categorized and prioritized based on where it was on the river, if it was a tributary or on the main stem. We wanted to see the erodibility it was, so slow, moderate, high. And then we also wanted to take into account how many homeowners in a certain area were interested in those. The more homeowners there is, the greater the impact we'll have with these projects. And so on the right side, we've got the areas of our ten sites. And so overall, between these 10 sites, we have 71 parcels and 50 homeowners. There's going to be about 9,000 linear feet of big civilization and 12 and a half acres of restoration when the project's done. And so these are our 10 different projects um, throughout the Pondre River. Noted, and then Will and I are going to do a brief overview of each of the 10, and then we'll do a deep dive on 
sunny side of Sandy Shores, which is the bottom right one, which we'll be hopefully implementing this fall. And so just moving from right to left upstream, we have Aquinfelter Bay. It's going to be about 1,500 linear feet um, of excavation and two and a half acres of restoration. There are five properties on this one, and just to highlight some unique challenges on each of these sites, um, you'll see there's trees on the upper bank that are going to have to get removed um, to do some of the grading. And we plan to hopefully reuse these in the large woody material layouts that I will show you in one part of the plans that later that we're doing. And then access concerns for equipment. So this is on the river. There's a small amount of shore. The river goes up and down. And so we're planning to do construction during the fish window when the water is slow and target to actually run equipment along the shore between each of these sites. However, some of these banks are so steep you can't drive an excavator down them. So we either need to find public access around. We've joked about using a barge on the river, which might end up happening. We'll see with funding. Um, but then we've had some homeowners offer their banks that might have like a little road down or already have a slightly less steep slope down to the shoreline. And so that's been an interesting component when coming up with all of these projects. And then you'll also see there's a bunch of docks being used and there's staircases that are going to have to be removed and replaced by the contractor or the homeowner prior to construction. And so we just have to keep that in mind um, for some of these. And so moving downstream, we've got Audrey Lane. This is a single homeowner. It's about half an acre, and then it'll be just over 100 linear feet of restoration and base civilization. This one is super steep, um, you can see in the photo. So we've got some access concerns just figuring out how we're going to get down. Um, there is, I think, a public forest service road that's pretty long that we might be able to use if we get an okay from them prior to construction. And then because this one's so slow, we're trying to regrade the banks to a two to one slope at the most. And so a lot of the homeowners didn't want their banks getting cut back into. And so we're planning to actually build the tow out. And so they'll get some property back that they've lost over the years. That was one of the biggest concerns of the homeowners um, that we heard. So we met with all 50 homeowners to discuss our plans, give them our draft, wanted to hear their input because it's their property too. It's not just the fish, it's about them and their homes. And so we wanted to incorporate their ideas and concerns into our designs. And so the third one, Sunnyside Sandy Shores. This one has 11 homeowners and a lot of different properties, uh, about 1,500 linear feet of big civilization and one and a half acres of restoration. Again, this one had a lot of trees along the edge that might need to be removed. And then due to the access on one of the homeowner sites, there are trees, but they're critical root zones in the access path. And so we will have to either have an arborist come inspect them or remove them prior to uh, construction. So we don't want to kill the roots and have the tree fall on someone down the road. Good. Um, so access concerns were another issue with fish line. And then again, we have drop removal, stair um, removal and replacement. And then this one was also really steep, and so we're planning to build the show up for the homeowners here. But there, this one was more homeowners, more properties, um, a little less than an acre, and a little over 500 linear feet for restoration and stabilization. This one will need tree removal. This one had steep banks, but I don't think we needed to build it out on this one. We have enough um, shoreline to actually do a two to one slope. Um, without having to build the tow And then access concerns again, having trying to find a homeowner that's either willing or a nearby the access route in the HOA has been uh, a little bit of an issue with some of these projects that wasn't laid out at the time, which could help with the timeline down the road if other CDs or other agencies want to get into specific projects like this, which I'll be interested in mind. Um, and then we also have done some good water placement for this one as well. So if you guys haven't noticed, a lot of the homeowners really like their boats and their wave runners and everything you can think of. And this river is really unique in the fact that it's got the wave run up action for running the banks. And it's one of the biggest concerns and complaints I heard from all 50 homeowners. And so in our designs, we definitely want to keep in mind this wave run up and um, trying to put our design in the spot where the wave run up comes so that it's not a shooter that goes down the road. 
and bear pod. This one had more than five homeowners initially. We've had some homeowner fallout over the last year. They just were really eager and wanted to get these in right away. They didn't realize. They had to wait for funding, which did become available for next year. So we're trying to implement it in 2025. Um, but we still have the five homeowners and six properties that are still wanting to be a part of this, thankfully. And so this will restore about 100 or yeah, one acre and a thousand linear feet uh, in this area. And so I don't know if you noticed in the video of Alex, but we had that bulkhead. So this is that site that has that cement bulkhead. And so we're going to try to remove that and replace it with some roof quads and logs and matting and other components. And uh, access is also a concern. So the one homeowner that fell out was the one that was going to let us access the shore here. So we'll have to come up with a new game plan for construction next year. Uh, and then again, this has got removal and replacement as well. And all that will talk about the last five real quick. So Mill Creek is probably the simplest of all the projects. So we don't need to fix the banks here. We're just going to do some simple removal to the area make it a lot better for the homeowner. So there's just one homeowner and the homeowner here and just a quarter of an acre. <clears throat> Next comes wagon wheel. So again, it's the upstream sites. There's going to be there's concern for access. There's access concern for the equipment. As you can see, there's a lot of trees um, just right before the bank. So uh, there may need to be tree removal to allow the road or just access to um, the bank site for that. And then there's also concerns that the homeowners have talked about that there's debris in the river that they may be concerned that the debris is going to get caught up uh, in our root rods and just water the debris. So I want to take that into consideration. Um, the next one is large lane. Um, as you can see, there's super steep banks here. So See the trees look like they're about to fall down the bank, so those are all going to need to be removed. And we're hoping to reuse those in our large woody material as a cooler. And then there's not much, there's no beach or there's no, um, yeah, there's no beach there, so that's also an access for um, a concern for access to equipment. It's just getting put it down there. Um, and then we're in this site, we're also planning to build out the tether and see what this site is. Okay, and then so this is um, the tire slew. So we split this up into two projects north and south, it's such a large area. Uh, so for this one, there's 12 properties, with eight homeowners, um, and 1.72 acres with about 800 feet of linear um, restoration. And in this one, this is similar as before, there's tree removal, um, and there's some access concerns with the shore and the equipment, uh, as well as the steep banks. Uh, and the uh, last one is the North Tiger Slough. This one is very similar as well. It just has the dock uh, concern as well. But those are going to need, need to be removed in place, as well as just the steep banks and uh, trees that are going to need to be Yeah, so on top of talking with all the homeowners, we also had to talk with all the different agencies. And so this included the county. So we needed a shoreline and floodplain permit um, to do any of this work. We had to work with Fish and Wildlife to do an HPA. And because we're doing a lot of fish friendly habitat based civilization techniques, we were able to walk back to the fish habitat enhancement protocol. And I know Alex mentioned in the video, we are doing some areas with very bird graph, and so we're planning to bury it and vegetate over it. And that was kind of up in the air, like, does that count as a fish habitat enhancement technique? Does it not? And we finally got the okay from Jeff, who's the biologist of fish and wildlife, that yes, it does count. So just FYI, it might not count in every area, but I know the Pondre River specifically, there is something written in the shoreline handbook. That does allow that. So we got lucky with that one. So that kind of allows you to get your HPA done a lot shorter than the general 60 day window. And then you also don't have to do your SIPO, which is awesome. Although we did have those ready just in case, so we weren't sure. Um, and then we also are working with the Army Corps on getting the JARPAs done. Um, we are trying to plan a visit with Jess, but he is also very busy. So we will see how that goes. Um, 
And so, yeah, I just wanted to go in more depth on the Sunnyside Sandy Shore project as we're going to be constructing on this wall. I just kind of tell you how that's going, what to expect for the full design, and how we can help us consult the conservation districts. And so, just a general process. Like I said, we met with all 50 homeowners with the POCD. They did a really great job of connecting us with each of them and kind of getting everyone together at once. We, I think, had 10 separate meetings for the 10 different sites, which is super helpful just having their relationship with the community. And then we conducted site visits to all 10 sites. The homeowners met with us and we walked around and just kind of took pictures and took measurements and um, just took data that we needed for the design. And then so the agencies for the permit needs ahead of time just to get started. So you don't want to put that off too long if you want their input on your design um, as you're going. So it's more of a smooth process. Uh, we looked up a lot of wetland, floodplain, hydrologic, hydraulic data. We looked at the flood insurance study reports and um, also had the survey done and looked at soils that we were dealing with and banks as that's crucial for the large woody material stability calculations. And then we created draft and final engineering plans for the conservation district. Uh, so yeah, this is Sandy Shores. Um, you'll see steep banks, a lot of homes, there's a lot of docks and a lot of stairs. And then again, this one is going to be 11 different properties and about 1,500 linear feet of bank civilization and one and a half acres of restoration civilization. And so after our site visit and meeting with the homeowners and getting their input and changing our initial plans based on what they told us their concerns were, we had um, this example of plan set. This is our cover page. So usually on one of these, we'll incorporate all the different parcels, the addresses, homeowners, so that the contractor can go out and find where they're supposed to go. And then we've got all the different parcels laid out. And you'll see this dotted line that is our access and uh, construction access for this. And so uh, up here in this area, that is going to be the temporary construction access area. And then the one along the shoreline, that's going to be more of a long-term riparian area just for monitoring for the conservation district to plan to monitor the banks and the vegetation, how the plants are thriving for three to five years after the project. And so I know easements aren't really like a happy Thing, but it's like a non easement just to have an landowner agreement so that they're able to access this down the road. Just make sure the project's actually successful. And then here's an example of one of the site plans. And so you'll see we have a mix of the large wooden material layout, and then we've got some very rough rock areas, and then we've got some double stacked coconut fire logs. And then we're going to plan to put coconut fair matting along the whole bank and vegetate it. And so we split the vegetation types with upland and lowland plants. That's going to be divided on the ordinary high water mark line. So we have we worked with Corey Renner at POCD, the riparian plant specialist, to figure out what native plants would be best to be submerged in water most of the year and which ones would do better on the higher parts of the bank. And the root logs, um, I'll get a little bit more into when we the details. Okay, so on this left side, we have our coconut coir log details. So this is for the contractor to understand how to lay out these stabilization toe protection techniques and how to regrade the banks behind it. And so for this one, we're doing a double stacked coconut coir log at the bank toe, and then we're going to have him or her, the contractor regrade this banks like to a two to one slope max. And then just meet with the existing at the top. And so we'll then replant the whole bank. And then similarly, we have that with the rock toe protection for the riffraff. And you'll see here it's buried underneath the vegetation um, with the coconut prayer matting. And we'll put live plant and things in that to help stabilize the bank more naturally. And as these plants grow over time, they'll take root and do a really good job. And there are some really great examples of existing willows. On the banks that had pristine banks, like no erosion happening, and then those spots that didn't have any banks were just totally cut out. So, just proved to the homeowners that the plants do a really great job um, in place of some of these harder techniques that we've seen. And the large woody material layout, um, this can be done in many different ways. You can have three, you can have six structures, you can have uh, different amounts. 
and they will may be made up of different lengths, different diameters. You'll want to figure out what angle you want it to stick out at, how much of the root water you want to stick out of the bank. And so gathering the soils data and putting it in the log stability calculator, we can figure out if these logs can be stacked on top of each other and be stable enough in the bank, or do we need to get some of the anchors put in? It just kind of depends on the site. And so with the sites that had the toes being built out, we use shorter logs to meet the grade, and so those ones will need the dumbbell anchors. But for this site in particular, I think they were good enough on their own to withstand the wave runoff and the river flow. And here's just an example of the planting details for the contractor. So we have it laid out with the different spacing here. So I think we have either two to four foot spacing on the lowland and then five to six foot spacing on the upland plants. And so we worked with the riparian specialist just to come up with a list of all of the native plants for this site in an area, and then the contractor will have to pick the five species out of each. Um, so they don't have to use every single plant. They can if they want to, but sometimes it's hard to find any stock plants. So we just gave them an option to pick five and go from there and put some stock. And we're going to be doing a one year plant establishment with the contractor. And so if anything dies within one year, they'll have to come back and replant on their own bed. And then POCE the during their three to five year monitoring, they might come back and stick some plants in if they need down the road. And then after all of this, we put together we have the DARPA, we've got the fish enhancement, HPA permits. And then um, after we gather all the permits and get those from the different agencies, the final product that we can give you guys to go to advertise for bid, however, you guys end up doing that process, whether it's through a roster or publicly or both, um, you'll get a final stamped set of bid ready plans. And you'll get a cost estimate for the project as well. And that will also, that's something we can also come up with ahead of time with a certain contingency amount so that you guys can put that into your grants, which is what we do with QCD for this project. And then you'll also get a bid spec package. And so typically we're given a division zero and one, which is the contract language, how the contractors get paid, who's covered when things happen. And then we as the engineers will do divisions two through nine. So that's what materials we want to do and how we want the contractor to put them in and how those differ from the wash dot standards. Those are typically used. And so since this hasn't been built yet, but is to be built this fall, we had our landscape architect team just come up with a rendering of what we think it might look like once it's done. And I'd say it looks a little bit more habitat friendly. It's got green, it's got root wads, it blends in with the natural environment, it should stabilize the banks. There are some homes that are really close to the edge of these. So just being able to build the toe out and vegetate, stabilize the banks, it's huge. And then just the most habitat is awesome. And so I just want to show a quick timeline just how this process really works. And so we had POCD go out and initiate the project. They got funding, they reached out to the homeowners, they got public involvement, and they reached out to us to help plan and prioritize what sites we wanted to go on. And then when they reached out to us, um, Alex actually wanted these plans shovel ready within four months of the RFP coming out. And so we did 10 projects in just two months of having the data we needed to do it, which is awesome. We really just wanted to help see these projects like these be put in the ground. And so I was more than happy just to put everything else aside and just like dive in. This was a super fun project for me. I actually grew up in San Point and where Lake Andre is, where this river steps off. So it's kind of been my factor. So really awesome to work on. Um, and then yeah, once we have the plans, we start doing the permitting phase and then finalizing the plans. We've got the construction bid support. Now we're trying to go to bid in the next week or so um, after the board meeting approves all of the spec package that I just showed you guys. So we're hoping to be done with this this fall and maybe give some can share some photos of how it went. Um, it is the first one of the 10, so it is kind of a learning lesson on all the different things, and then it should be very smooth going forward with the following nine. Now that we'll talk about some takeaways and lessons learned. So yes, so um, so the takeaway that we learned from the that 
uh, using the bioengineering techniques that we touched on a few times, just help promote and support blog quality and group fish habitat, as well as owners and just giving them back uh, some of the land that they've lost, so we're pulling these hoes out, as well as stopping that erosion from taking more land away from them, which I know that they uh, really hold dear to their hearts and their land on the river. And then, as we said, like the more homeowners, the greater impact that we can have. So having 50 homeowners was amazing. Uh, just getting all the people together that want to do this and can string properties together and have large loss of the near having stream restoration is great. Things. And then, as Kayla said before, the USB has done a great job of just reaching out to them, just getting everyone on board and just doing a great job of communicating with everyone and getting people to sign up. And then some of the lessons learned, um, we had some bumps along the way, and this was our first time doing this, as well as give speed, so that's to be expected. Um, just that, to have a landowner agreement signed, just the site survey and trees inspected, and access for construction planned out ahead of time before we design. Um, moving forward, this would be just would help a lot with the process, as well as working with the county, the BDFW, Army Corps, um, to decide who's submitting permits early on. Uh, getting the project, um, just getting all those out of the way for the design process, as well as just having necessary good documents uh, given to us, um, engineers, or other consultants, buyers to do the process. That was a snag that we had, but moving forward. So. Well, thank you. Unless the end of the day. <laughs> thank you. Questions that you guys have. Well, we've got uh, about 10 minutes for questions. Yeah. I was curious where you get like where you source the fill for building out the tow. Yeah, so we're either going to we're going to try to reuse what is taken out for the implementation of the logs as those have to be put into the current bank. Um, but there is also some local fill that the house fill tribe nearby uses and they're trying to get rid of. And so we're hoping just to use that. Um, as long as it follows the top soil level A type, uh, or we can use that or whatever we don't have enough of. That's your mind. Yes. Along that same line, when you're going to build the tow out, do you have a good dewatering plan for that? I'm assuming that's going to be even at low water. And so the water. The, they, just with the grade, there should still be enough shore on most of these. Mm -hmm. um, the water does get pretty low, especially right now with the gate being out of the dam oh. due to the well issue. Um, and we haven't really had to have too much, but that is something we have in the specs for the contractor to figure out if even yeah. Yes. Do you all have like an implementation schedule for the other nine locations, like besides just the one that's being so it'll be based on funding availability. So we originally were going to do three this year and then due to a couple of grants not going through we're only doing one this year. We have I think one or two grants for next year, but we do have all of our HPA permits and the other ones that are good for five years. So we're hoping to get all send up next five years. But not doing like all nine next year. Right. Okay. Yeah it'll be spread out over the next five. And then it should be August through no beginning of November just while that water is low. Do you have site maintenance post construction um, incorporated into the funding? Um, so that's something you has see that was first on doing. Yeah, and they did monitor that. Yes. What's the you already got bids, right? What how did those come in? What was the cost? We're actually in the process of getting those that were test. Yeah. So Are we you were right? hoping to go to bed a month ago and then we realized the QC doesn't have their division zero and one oh, spec for yeah. their plate. So we're trying to actually help them write that because they weren't around after the recession in 08, so they're kind of rebuilding themselves right now. So they are lacking a lot of documents that were usually given stuff for this little behind schedule. Huh. But I will let you know how those go. Is the, is the engineer's estimate under lock and key, or can we know what it is? I think the Sunnyside project should be around 400 grams. Oh, the site. Oh, okay. So we also had to do a little bit of tweaking. It depends if you're doing prevailing wage or not as well. So if you're not doing prevailing wage, you can drop a lot of the labor items by 20 to 40 percent of the cost, not um, just a huge saving. So it just kind of depends which way the project goes. I have one more question. Yes. Do you want to come back next year and give us a presentation on how it works? I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
We can just talk about that one. Now we don't have to go through all the rest. Of the rest of <laughs> Does anybody have any more questions for Kayla and Will? If you guys do, I'll leave some business cards up here so you can stay up. Thank you very much for the effort and putting together the